Theranostics and radio, radio pharmaceutical trials. We all know that radium-223 is an alpha particle. It has advantages over beta particles. You need only one to 10 hits to kill, to uh, damage DNA. It's maybe 100 to 1,000 hits. Double-stranded breaks with alpha particles, single-stranded with beta particles. Simca approved um, radium-223 compared to placebo. Uh, people think of this as a palliative drug. It is a survival drug. Uh, it improves survival in our patients uh, as well as palliates our patients. And uh, it's about a three-month difference uh, for all comers. This was the, char where were the characteristics, predominantly Caucasians. Um, some patients had extensive metastatic disease, uh, nearly half, and uh, about half of these patients were in pain. A 3.6-month su survival benefit for those patients who um, were um, uh, receiving radium compared to uh, placebo. And then uh, when we look at prior docetaxel use, as one would expect, because this were, were patients who had, did not have docetaxel, either were not eligible or refused it, as well as prior docetaxel, higher survival, uh, 4.6 versus 3.1 months, not unsurprising. So radium's around, where do we use it, and how do we use it, and how can we combine it? As Steve mentioned before, uh, this is potentially a synergistic agent with a number of different drugs. So um, Joe Kim at my institution actually published this, but there's an upregulation of, of T cells after administration of radium and also an upregulation of pd one positive cells as well. And so that led us to, we actually used that as a justification for uh, doing a, a, a phase one study of atezolizumab combined with radium, which we've completed and it's going to hopefully be presented within the next year or so. Uh, but there is evidence, or there is at least theoretical evidence, that you potentially can cause a lo local epscopal effect uh, by giving radium plus a checkpoint inhibitor. So uh, as I mentioned before, there's the study with atezolizumab, the and there are three trials that are out there that combine a checkpoint or CYP-T with radium-223. And I think this is an interesting way of trying to exploit both treatments at the same time. We also talked before about docetaxel. Now, the difference here is that the docetaxel dose that Mike Morris established in this phase one study uh, had to be reduced from 75, which is the standard, to 60. And uh, he administered this with radium, found you know, fairly interesting PSA decline rates, but this has led to a couple of different studies uh, moving radium up front in castrate resistant as well as castrate sensitive disease. Uh, piece three is looking at metastatic patients. Uh, who have uh, two bone mets, no opiates, randomizing them to androm blockade uh, plus enzalutamide and radium versus enzalutamide alone. And then in castrate-resistant disease, Mike Morris is leading a trial in the intergroup of docetaxel at 60 prednisone and radium-223 versus docetaxel and prednisone alone. And these are two trials that are actively accruing patients. The uh, second one is actively accruing in the United States. Often our patients ask us, I've gotten six co 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 courses of radium-223, I feel great, why can't I get more? Well, that's the FDA label. And this is the trouble we're seeing with some of these isotopes. You really need to define the phase one doses first before you go forward. So there was a randomized uh, phase two trial that looked at three doses of radium. Standard dose, 55 kbqs per kilogram for six doses. High dose, which was 88 up, up for up to six doses. And then an extended schedule. Same dosage as here, but 12 weeks rather than six weeks. And these patients were stratified based upon chemotherapy, their alkaline phosphatase. This is actually a way of reassuring your patient as to whether they're responding to radium. The alkaphos usually drops. And also concomitant bisphosphonate and rank ligand use. This is important for the radium trials because I think that explains the issue that went on with abiraterone uh, previously where uh, patients who had the bisphosphonates really didn't have the high fracture rates. So treatment exposure, majority of these patients got all six doses. Uh, uh, here, it's the extended schedule, it's a little bit less. Same thing with the high dose. Uh, but no difference in skeletal event-free survival with any of these arms, no difference in overall survival. And when we look at RPFS, nothing really significantly different. Time to first event, time to pain progression, uh, or pain improvement. So basically, this is telling us that six doses of radium is right in unselected patients, it doesn't make sense to go on to either higher dosages or 12 doses. I think the most exciting area in isotopes are the theranostics or using uh, targeted agents to deliver isotopes uh, to spots where there are um, uh, prostate cancer cells. P PSMA, which is prostate-specific membrane antigen, you've heard a lot about this at this meeting in terms of imaging. 
there have been isotopes that have been linked to uh, PSMA targeted agents in a variety of different ways, whether these be antibodies or small molecules. And this is a way of delivering radiation therapy directly to the tumor site. So the Germans actually took 145 patients at 12 centers. These patients had received prior treatment. Now, these patients were selected. These were not just all comers. These had to have a positive PSMA PET scan. Interestingly, the pa areas where there tends to be negativity is in the liver, uh, but these patients then were then retreated with this lutetium PSMA complex or treated, and they're allowed to be treated again two to three months later. And this was fairly safe with 10% of patients developing neutropenia as well as leukopenia and some transaminitis. But look at your PSA decline rate, 68% uh, had a PSA decline uh, of 50%, 60% with some form of PSA decline. This is also a problem with the, uh, the, uh, these, these complexes. Xerostomia, uh, as we know, um, PSMA is, is expressed in the salivary glands, and so that can be an issue. Another trial some, uh, at the Peter Max, somewhat smaller, 43 patients. They were scanned based upon their PET scans. 30 were in a row. They received this lutetium PSA complex up to four cycles. And again, we're seeing some significant PSA declines uh, at 12 weeks, more than half of patients having 50% PSA declines. And again, dry mouth has been the big problem here uh, with this particular drug. So we need a randomized trial. This trial has closed to accrual. I would hope that it's going to read out very, very shortly. Uh, the vision study is taking patients with castrate-resistant prostate cancer. It's now closed. It actually took a little longer time to accrue. Uh, patients were randomized to the lutetium PSMA uh, 617 complex, two to one ratio, versus best standard of care. So with the CARD data, I'm really a little bit concerned that this may actually give some, uh, uh, there may be some heterogeneity in this particular arm, but let's see what the results finally turn out to be. And the therapy trial is, is randomizing lutetium versus cabazitaxel which I think is a very, very good trial, and I think there's some important issues in terms of toxicity and response that need to come forth. Uh, there have been some other dose escalation studies, as I mentioned before, um, and um, this is from, uh, uh, from a, I think, Scott Gow's group, where uh, they were looking at PSMA imaging. They received one cycle, and again, you start seeing PSA response rates of about 50%. Again, PFS of about five months, survival about 15 months. So in conclusion, radium-223, uh, is an effective treatment uh, for metastatic prostate cancer. The question is, when do you use it? Right now, uh, we generally don't give that along with abiraterone and prednisone or and other next generation agents because we don't know what the toxicity patterns are going to be. I think that needs to be further defined. I think that uh, Bayer actually kind of jumped the gun on, um, uh, on declaring that, or at least closing that trial early because of the issue of bisphosphonates. If you're on radium, you need to be on a bisphosphonate or an um, anti-resorptive agent. Uh, Combination trials are ongoing, and I think the exciting area of the Theranostics where we are seeing improvements in PSA uh, for targeted treatments.